We've finally done it, boyos. We've managed to get Paradox to give some love to Imperator Rome, and we have two new patches that just got released this month in the open beta of Imperator Rome, which by the way means that they've started developing Imperator Rome again, or at the very least they assigned a couple of their developers or programmers to work on the game once more. This is of course all because of you and because of the multitude of creators that have decided to make videos covering Imperator Rome. We decided this a few months back and there's been tens of creators that have been covering the game so big shout out to everybody that's been involved in this little project of ours because it's really paid off the player base for Imperator Rome literally doubled in the last month since people have been uh, making videos covering the game check it out last three months you can see the sudden increase it started out around February then we released our video other creators started releasing their videos as well we even managed to get up to 2600 with the unofficial Imperator Rome uh, multiplayer and then it's steadily kept at around a thousand it's basically stabilized at around a thousand a thousand two hundred players in my opinion now so it's definitely informed paradox that there's still a chance for this game that I personally think deserves a chance it's an amazing game there's no official statement of having a relaunch development for Imperator but unofficially speaking if we manage to get an steady 2,000 average players for the game they will start proper development on it so this is my video to to encourage you guys to start playing Imperator Rome once more and today we're gonna show you why you should be playing Imperator Rome and we're gonna be using the latest patch because remember they released on the 11th of April 2024 one patch with a massive amount of uh, fixes and aside from that one day later they released another patch with even more fixes these are in the uh, open beta patch so you do have to make sure that you have the open beta patch if you want to play with them the importance of this is though the fact that it shows us that as a community we can come together and we can even influence the game developers of a particular company. I know some of you people commented on my uh, last uh, Imperator Rome video saying that, oh, Glutti, you guys got sponsored by Paradox to do this. No, no, we didn't. This was a collective decision by multiple creators that love Imperator that also feel that with the 2.0 update, the game is in a very good state now, but unfortunately because of the initial release where, let's face it, it was a pretty bland game. It just gave a bad taste to everybody else and people just decided to not give it a second chance so if you're watching this and you haven't played Imperator recently do give it a second chance we're also going to be using the uh, Invictus mod today and the better UI mod you should have a link to both of those in the description below now I really hope that we're not going to have any issues uh, with with the mod and with the new patch there might be some because I'm not sure if it's fully optimized for the new patch but I think most of the changes with the beta patch is just bug fixes not necessarily mechanic stuff so I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue I will be however doing something cool here I'm gonna be making it so that we get chaotic AI this is gonna make the AI more unpredictable and a lot more aggressive I'm doing that for a little bit of a challenge and of course I shall be playing as the Romans the only nation that you should be playing in this game if you're not playing as the Romans well you're just a heretical scumbag that you shall be put down by my legionaries that's what's gonna happen here okay you're going down a a Ron oh but Ludi, you only play as Rome Imperator Rome hey man why do you think Think it's called Imperator Rome. Why is it not called Carthage? Oh, that's right, because we fucking salted it. That's why, okay, motherfucker? There's no Carthage. There's not gonna be a Carthage in this run, also. There's not gonna be a Mastodon. There's not gonna be an Antagonid Kingdom. There's gonna be only Rome and its tributaries. That's right. We're gonna be schnappled duping today, boys. Well, technically, let's say uh for the first part of this campaign, we're gonna take take the uh Italian peninsula and we're gonna be playing semi-tall, and then we're gonna establish tributaries around. We don't want to directly own those uh, filthy lands you know what I mean also I'd like to actually make this into a proper run so if you guys want to see the second bit since we want to be testing out the new patch and see how viable it is of course then let's get uh, 4,000 likes in this video shall we boys and seeing as a lot of the things in this game might be a little bit new to most of you guys I'm gonna be explaining a little bit more everything that, that I'm doing here so the omen that we're gonna go for first is gonna be the one that's gonna impact us the most at the start and that's gonna be the aggressive expansion impact we're gonna go for Jupiter Jupiter's gonna be our initial favorite god so we're gonna get the omen from jupiter which offers aggressive expansion minus 0.04 which is vital since we're gonna be expanding like crazy plus jupiter also has population capacity plus 7.5 and uh, pop assimilation 0.15 from the uh, little artifacts that we have for the temple of jupiter which is situated in rome since jupiter is the greatest of gods in the uh, roman pantheon also gonna set up some of these other statues for diana why not might as well since we have them right we probably will use her in the 
future. Obviously, we're gonna go for the classic Roman ideas of morale of armies, ordered retreat, and we're also gonna get the uh, loyalty of generals since uh, we, we don't wanna have rebellions. Rebellions, historically speaking, were the reason the Roman Empire kind of collapsed. So, we'll try to prevent that from an early phase. Since we are playing Imperator Rome, I also want to show you guys all the features that we are going to get in Europa Universalis 5 that are currently present in uh, Imperator Rome. I know about these, obviously, because uh, Johan has been addressing this a lot on the forums, and he's pretty much explained half of Europa Universalis 5 as it stands right now, and uh, as such, we realize that there's a lot of features that are currently in Imperator Rome, which are also present in EU5. One of them, for example, is the province system so we have a province this is the province itself then we have other locations within the province so for example Fregele, Fundi, Norba, Chirche and so on right and most of these are going to be actual settlements in EU5 they're not called settlements they're called villages but it's essentially the same thing now eventually you can turn these settlements into a city by founding a city and then after into a metropolis by founding a metropolis it does cost some influence points and some cash to do so and it requires a certain amount of population present in that particular location. In EU5, I believe it's not city, it's uh, village, town, and city instead of uh, settlement, city, and uh, met metropolis, but it's in essence the same thing. The building system is also extremely similar. From what I understand, EU5 is going to have an uncapped amount of buildings in your provinces, and you can build in each location individually, just like you can in Imperator Rome, as well as uh, cities and metropolises will have different types of buildings. And then you might be wondering, why don't you just build cities everywhere? Well, because you're going to need the uh, villages to provide the food only villages provide food just like only settlements provide food in Imperator Rome not having food is going to essentially starve out the people in that particular province and the army in that particular province so you need to make sure you have a good mix of both the villages and cities in your provinces in EU5 as much as you need to do so in uh, Imperator Rome now before we talk about that anymore let's go ahead and get our technologies unlocked I'm going to be gunning all the way towards professional training because we all know we need to reform our army so the professional training technology here or advanced as it is called in Imperator Rome allows us to uh, get certain legislation which lets us raise legions as it stands right now we can only get levies in our lands we have levies in Italia and levies in Magna Grecia they're very small because we only have very few provinces in order to get legions we need to change our legislation so we go to government we go to laws we need to have either Punic reforms or Marian reforms to get the Punic one we have to have professional training which we got and we also need to be a regional power Power. We're going to be a regional power fairly soon because we're going to be wiping out our neighbors in a couple of moments. For the Marian reforms, we are going to have to wait a little bit because we need to invent cohorts and we have to be a great power and we need to have the military reform event chain. And that's going to allow us to recruit an unrestricted amount of legions. Legions, in essence, are significantly better units. They're dedicated soldiers, a standing army of our nation. Go ahead and also uh, consolidate these two navies into one, assign a old guy so he can, you know, pretend that he's actually doing something for the remainder of his years. And let's get the rest of the technologies that we have. We have four more innovation points. We're going to go for a couple of these uh, civic advances because we don't really have any right now. And some oratory advances too. Aggressive expansion change minus 0.02 is massive since as you probably expected it, we're going to be expanding really fast early on. Economically speaking, we're going to keep it as it is right now. We're going to not change anything right there. We might just change the army maintenance, lower it for the time being since we're not at war. Same goes for the the fleet maintenance and the fort maintenance for that matter and it's time to import some goods now one thing that i want to mention is oh whoa, okay that's new that's actually new so we now can see goods that we have a surplus for so you can see iron grain and wine we have a surplus for this is added with the recent patch the one released yesterday or day before because this was not in here before that is freaking awesome that really shows that the dev team is actually trying to improve the game actively even though it's probably just one or two people working on it right now right this makes it so much easier for me to know what uh, resources I should be gunning for and what I don't need to because I already have a surplus of. Whenever you get a resource, you get a certain bonus from that particular resource imported alongside some money from importing it or exporting it. Plus, when you get a surplus of it, you get a secondary bonus. So you always want to have surpluses in your nation. So, for example, I'd like to get the building cost minus 5%. I'd also like to get the legion maintenance, but not now, obviously, when I get the legions. Citizen happiness, always welcomed, of course. 
let's get that from apparently only one spot we can get it from same i'm gonna get some spices because that's pretty good money as well it's not just uh about the bonus it's also about the money that we're getting right population output is freaking awesome too so let's get some population output shall we we already have a horse so that means we also get heavy cavalry discipline plus 10 percent truth be told i don't really need this surplus right now because i don't have any heavy cap so i'm gonna cancel that actually yeah i'm gonna cancel that that was my bad instead i'm gonna go for the livestock livestock is a must because we need as much uh food as possible let's get some fish for that matter too uh looks like we can only get it from the carthaginians or our future rivals when imperator rome was initially released we had essentially mana points that was changed and now we have influence power or political influence my bad now i strongly suspect that eu5 is also going to have a system where you have some type of crown power or political influence or something of the sort which essentially acts the same like mana points and is going to work in tandem with gold as it does in imperato rome right now you need political influence to change your legislation you need it to upgrade your provinces you need it for a lot of things in the game essentially right so before anything else let's also go ahead and uh click on our subjects and we're gonna start improving opinion of our subjects so we can start integrating them afterwards it's gonna cost us a little bit of money but not to worry it's not too much money nothing we cannot handle that's for sure and let's also start the uh roman italia mission and encourage expansion this type of mission tree that we have in imperator i strongly suspect is going to be similar in uh eu5 because unlike the mission tree in eu4 this one essentially has to progress towards reaching full activation in some cases so it's a mixture of hoi 4 and eu4 mechanics in my opinion and we're going to get likely something very similar to that in uh eu5 plus once you finish this mission tree you get a new mission tree so there's multiple mission trees for the same nation which i also suspect is going to be an eu5 feature that's for sure i mean it's a great feature i wouldn't see why they wouldn't implement it in eu5 as well right that's what i'm saying here another great thing you can do with your influence and some money is you could support specific political parties which will come with their benefits and their debuffs so keep that in mind nobody's perfect at least not in imperator rome and that's what makes it a really fun game in my opinion go ahead and um go for fabrication speed or claim cost go with the claim cost for 180 days i'm doing that because we're gonna need to uh start getting claims all around our neighbors here and we got some claims on the samnites which is campania apulia we've got low food supply in this particular province because right now we only have one of the locations of the uh, tuscia province most of the locations belong either to uh, sabinia or they belong to etruria so we need to get the rest of those provinces in order to fully make tuscia a viable province for us scientific breakthrough that is awesome martial advance plus 85 percent but we get for two years oh, sorry for 10 years corrupt research yeah i'm okay i don't I, I'm, I'm i'm fine thing claims on umbria we do not have a truce with umbria my boys so we can start with our assault of uh, picenum they are allied to picentia let's go ahead and declare the war boom skibidombom and we're gonna need to increase the army maintenance the fleet maintenance as well as the fort maintenance and we have to raise our levies let's go boys it's time for war go ahead and attack their armies we don't want them to uh occupy our provinces because whenever they occupy provinces they take the actual population as slaves there you go we just lost two three actually three pops we lost which became uh, enslaved so we need to uh get our population back essentially uh claims on sabinia yes please okay so that's awesome because sabinia is actually right here they're allied to etruria umbria picentia yeah that's gonna be an issue for me Etruscans must be destroyed yes they do yes they freaking do all right we defeated their armies there i need to actually take back these provinces one of my favorite parts about imperator rome is the uh, logistics supply system so unlike eu4 your logistics is determined by your supply train your supply train is essentially donkey trains right so right now we have three supply trains basically three donkey cohorts and these donkey cohorts can hold up to a certain amount of uh food and every month this food goes down because it's being eaten by our soldiers so whenever the supply reaches zero your army dies off to attrition super fast that means you don't want your army to die off to attrition so as consequence you need to make sure you have enough food you automatically get the food whenever you go through provinces so it's not really much of an issue when it comes down to it but the thing is um you really need to be careful and make sure it does not reach zero because then it's it's pretty bad it, your units die off really fast can we also take a moment to appreciate how no matter what freaking game i'm playing the sieges are going up to freaking 28 percent let me guess 50 oh it didn't even progress a little bit from that siege phase awesome i love it i really really love it oh meanwhile my little vassal here is already up to 42 percent despite having started sieging that way later than i started sieging the other province like what come on man take note every province that we occupy that is not 
not automatically occupied when we take their capital also uh, brings us some slaves and we want to get as many slaves as possible the more slaves we have in our society the richer we are so we possibly will try to enslave half of the world to just become filthy rich in this game there's also a percentage chance that you're going to get slaves when you occupy provinces not a guarantee there you go we got one slave that we send over to uh, peltun where the hell is peltun i think that is the end of the war for me isn't it yes let's uh let's sue for peace boom we're taking this we're taking that this we are essentially fully annexing you guys and there's nothing you can do about it that's five aggressive expansion we can also lose another 0.5 aggressive expansion if we spare some of these bastards. I guess we can spare them, sure. We now have also become a uh, local power, is it? I think so. Or a regional power? I'm not sure. There, we can do one of the missions, unseat the Umbrians. As such, we can uh, get five pops in uh, the Iguvium province, become a Roman, our culture, or seven in the other province, or three or four. I'm gonna go for the seven. Clearly, it's important to have as many Roman pops around as possible because they are our peeps, right? All right, let's see if they're gonna um, submit to us i'm gonna demand their submission they say no i'm gonna attack and they said no i got claims i'm attack yes scumbags how dare you deny being my vassal eh ancona by the way is one of the multiple greek city state colonies by the fringes of the italian peninsula in uh, 452 Adurbe Condita, most of the Mediterranean had Greek colonies all the way into North Africa, South Gaul, the coastline of Iberia, the coastline of Italy, obviously all of Greece, Anatolia, even the uh, northern bits of Egypt and the Black Sea had plenty of Greek colonies. And uh, 452 essentially means from the moment when the city of Rome was founded. We also have a bad research ratio, that is because we do not have enough citizens and nobles in our country, so we need to get more people promoted to be citizens and nobles the easiest way to do so in my opinion would be to just build libraries as well to help with the with the research problems in any case that would be the easiest so let's go ahead and get a library in uh, rome and another library in capua why not it's a pretty big city as well capua 43 population out of 51 is pretty decent we got one more invention we can get so let's go ahead and get what maybe the building cost reduction let's do it man that means for the rest of the campaign we get cheaper buildings not too much cheaper but still better than nothing right i also love the uh, combat system that we have in Imperator Rome. So we have a few things here that we don't have in EU4. First off, obviously, we have a lot of different units, and then we can change the position of the unit. So we can have, for example, light cavalry at the front, heavy infantry at the back, or whatever we want to desire. Obviously, we're going to keep the heavy infantry at the front, and then light infantry at the back. Actually, you know what? We're going to keep um, spearmen at the back, and we're going to keep our light infantry on the flanks. Aside from that, we can also change a few other things. So, for example, we can change the uh, tactics. And each tactic offers different advantages based on uh, what kind of units you have. So, for example, the shock action gives you extra bonus for your heavy infantry. So, if we have a heavy infantry, heavy army, heavy infantry, heavy army, see what I did there? Then we probably should go for shock action. Or bottleneck is not bad also for that matter with the uh, heavy infantry. And now, based on what tactic the enemy army that you encounter has, you might get a debuff or an advantage against them. Because each of these tactics counter each other. The legions also can construct forts if they want to once we have the Castra technology and most importantly we can build roads if we want to which is a huge deal building roads with the Roman legions is essentially a staple of Imperator Rome it's pretty much why I play this game in the first place to build roads everywhere I go I'm gonna build myself a secondary library in Rome because I really want to have very educated people there Ludi you're ignoring all your other cities shut up bro Rome is eternal okay let the looting be gentle we could actually squeeze 65 out of this and I'm gonna get rid of some of the Greek pops in there. I don't mind if I do actually. Let's also go over to this province because we're gonna be attacking uh, Sabinia and their ally Etruria up next. Plus I love the fact that I've got, essentially got like no aggressive expansion right now from taking quite a few lengths already. Oh this is gonna be just juicy man. Okay we can also get a fourth I believe uh, great family now so who are we gonna go for? Who one of you? Which one of you is the chattiest of them all? I think actually this guy might be good. He's 52. How about this other guy? He is 39. He is really not bad lucius this guy is 12 marshall though he has nine marshall lucius varinus in my eyes he's lucius varinus now he is one of our four main families here we need to make sure that we have enough family members from each of the family assigned in either office positions or in military positions or they start becoming very uh you know not happy with us so yeah let's go ahead and declare the war and we can take picenium as well as all of etruria and this war of course plus the best part is that after the war with the etruscans we can 
chill for a couple of years before we go into the south so we can consolidate our holdings let's also go ahead and uh grant a leadership position let's uh split up this unit here in half and then we give leadership of the other fleet to the new family members so they're not scorned anymore and now that that's done as well let's go get more import routes <laughs> i'm gonna go for a date guys it's time it's high time one of us gets a date all right and a second date i'm going for the second date because uh i want to get the national commerce income plus five percent so it's actually going to be quite a little bit of money as consequence let's see how many units the etruscans can muster hopefully not more than us because i'm using this mod i haven't played with the mod in a really long time i'm not sure how many units they can actually muster at the start so i'm a little bit worried about it not gonna lie holy shit they have 48 ships what all right well looks like they have 18,000 at least so let's uh divide and conquer a little bit shall we let's attack the army in the south wipe it out then attack the one in the north when they're separate literally using roman tactics against the actual enemies of the romans how can you not play this game man this is beautiful and they've got movement lock so we're gonna be able to catch up to them or not never mind they got a road in that province so yeah because at the start we have a, a road between some of these provinces units going on that road are faster and that applies to any units not just our units this road goes from ostia all the way to um saticula apparently making movement on the particular area significantly faster and that's why we managed to catch up to these guys this is the first army that we fight that's actually a proper big army so yeah let's see how this is going here looks like we are in uh historical terms kicking their fucking ass that's uh that's exactly what's going on there we got a trade for our leader he is now disciplined that's good us romans do appreciate discipline that's for sure i've kind of become addicted to uh non shall, shall hide because it offers me so much money and let's face it getting all that money early on means we, means we can build a lot of buildings and as such we can advance over everybody else faster now my unit here has no more food because we've been out uh, sieging down kurtum so we got to go back to our provinces and replenish our food stocks because right now it's pretty bad i think the only actual uh province that can replenish this army is going to be the roman province because it's the only province that i have that has a massive surplus of food no i'm wrong we have zero food in uh, latium that's really bad that's actually really bad okay so let's go over to this province we have food here apparently how do we not have food on our capital though holy shit we need to import more food then all right we uh have gotten a couple more import routes so now we're actually getting food in uh, latium thank god i noticed otherwise this could have been really bad we could have lost a lot of pops in the process uh, speaking of really bad we are losing this battle though and our units need to wait for a while to get some food from uh, the other province before we actually reinforce the front because 39 food is not gonna cut it that's for sure we also have a little bit of a system here the peace imminent system as i call it essentially if within a certain time frame we don't do a peace deal then there's gonna be an automatic peace deal we don't want that automatic peace deal so we're gonna need to start sieging down some provinces here to peace out before the 905 days have passed our biggest challenge at the start is gonna be of course carthage right now carthage not only has these particular provinces but they also have a massive amount of uh, tributaries so mauritania look at that mauritania massilia everybody essentially in north africa more or less is their tributary as well as parts of uh, the uh, hispanic area so we really need to expand quickly in order to be able to uh, fight against the carthaginians in a few years when the punic wars will happen sadly we were not able to conquer all of etruria in the time frame that we had so we're just going to need to peace out with what we've got right now that means we're going to take most of etruria but they're still going to keep on to three provinces here as well as the lands that they have in uh, corsica so unfortunately we're going to need to go to war with them again to finish what we started essentially that being said we've got a little bit of a call for peace so that's good that we peaced out we also can assign a uh, governor for the province of valis arni which is in cisalpine gold right now we don't have much of cisalpine gold but um we do need a governor so let's assign this guy i guess and we can also do another one of our missions and the etruscans again i'll go for the whichever option gives me the most roman population there you go albeit technically we didn't actually uh, end the etruscans did we because they still survive i just didn't have enough ships i didn't bother to build any ships and the truth is that they've got a lot of ships like holy shit they built 63 ships my dude holy mother now that we're at peace we can wait for our food supplies to also get back on track because it's pretty bad the situation bring our soldiers to the south because we're going to be attacking uh, up next lucania and somnium and then after that we're going to have our peace for a while i know what you're thinking ludi these soldiers have been fighting non-stop since the start yes they have and i really appreciate it but it's time uh to conquer the south okay so be quiet and i'm gonna use all the money that i managed to get from this war to build the libraries like crazy everywhere i'm building libraries i'm gonna make the smartest people around and i'm also gonna be building in my villages especially the villages that have extra food production i'm gonna build buildings to get some food so i don't starve during war so for example in this particular province where we're producing vegetables we can build a farming settlement 
development, which is going to increase our food supply, base resource production plus one, essentially meaning we produce vegetables from this province. This is only possible in provinces that actually produce some type of uh, food item. So here, for example, we are getting monthly plus six food because we're producing grain. So if we build a farming settlement, we're going to get double the amount of uh, grain. But we right now can only have one possible building there. And that is currently a port. Now, unless I destroy the port, I cannot build another building set. Here, for example, again, we are producing what? Let's see, olives. Olives, we build a farming settlement. We're going to get more olives, more food in the process. Less chance of us starving out because we got olives now. Same thing here, fish. But even though we're producing fish, this is not a village. So we're not going to be able to get extra fish from it. Also, take note, uh, building farming settlements takes a really long time. 700 freaking days. All right, let's go with the war. We're going to set uh, Campania as the main war target. Gucci von Strombolucci and push for their provinces quickly before they realize what's even going on. Also, don't forget to make sure you got imports in all of your uh, provinces, not just your capital, because you can get trade routes in your provinces. So that's a great way of uh, boosting up your food. For example, you can import food from other parts of the world with the trade routes. Gentle Luton? Don't think so, buddy. Do not think so. Okay, we don't do gentle loot in here for the simple fact that we can use the money to build more stuff. Now, this province here, we already have a fortress. I'm going to destroy the fortress. I'm going to build a farming settlement. We don't really need a fortress there anyway. We might as well just build a fortress in an adjacent province that is not a village. For example, we could build a fortress in Capua, which is one of our big cities. So it's even more worth it because it's better to defend cities with fortresses than it is to just defend small villages. It looks like because I've got aggressive AI on, um, the Epirates have occupied parts of Samni and most of Lucania, which is really bad for me because that means that Epirus is likely going to annex that, right? Which means I'm going to have to fight against Epirus in order to uh, get the provinces that I want to have. Let's also send some gifts towards our vassals so we can start integrating them afterwards. We need 200 relations to integrate them. And right now we should have, after we send that gift, enough relations to do so. There you go. I was right. We can start integrating them now. So the trick for this is to make sure that you are at war when you start integrating them because you get some extra relations when you're at war towards your uh, vassals, which you will wouldn't be getting otherwise and you wouldn't be able to reach 190 relations to start integrating at peace oh Epirus just peaced out and they didn't take anything oh you wussies you should have taken everything now i'm gonna take everything because you didn't and we seem to have a bit of war exhaustion which is giving uh some negative stuff for our population they're not happy and we are losing popularity so after this war as promised no more wars i'm a i'm a man of my word i said we're gonna have piss in our times and we're gonna have massive piss right after this war in fact you know what they call me Ludi the Peaceful when you look up when you look up um, Emperor Ludi in the history book. Don't forget guys, we can also use the macro builder to start building shit. So we can click settlement uh, farming settlements and we can see where that's available to be built. So we're going to do one here and that's it because we don't have any more monies. Avec le war is done. Scooby booby de boo and where did Samnium go? Nobody knows. Nobody even saw them around. They did they even exist in the first place? I highly doubt it. Let's go ahead and disband our levies now. Now we're going to get some military experience when we disband our armies so we got 71 military experience now let's see how much we're gonna get after we disband all of our armies actually wait was that it was that all of our armies no it wasn't where's the other one? and we can also do more missions crush the samnites what do you know seven pops beautiful vanquish lucanians as well don't mind if i do and approach the greech the Gre the, the greech yes the greech approach the greech guy holy mother veneto just consolidated most of north italy what Okay, we only have like three nations in North Italy. That is actually impressive. If you're still struggling with integrating your vassals, you could also just go to your economy tab and uh, make it so that taxes are lax, which is going to give them 50 opinion of you if you don't want to integrate them when you're at war. That's also an option, of course. Now, boy, it's time for a little bit of Chilium. Let's click on Rome itself. Now, you're probably noticing here that we've got more Etruscan pops than we even have Roman pops because, you know, the Etruscan lands are pretty massive. But not to fear, we're going to slowly convert every everybody to um to roman that's for sure etruscans after all are still a part of our culture group and speaking of let's actually look a little bit at the culture groups and everything so culture map mode this is what we have the red ones are within our culture group sardinians are separate the various celts in the north we've got the greeks and a lot of them in our islands actually because most of the coastline has some type of greek colony then we also have some illyrians here in masapia the punics by the coastline in carthage and the two types of hispanic now that that's done let's also uh, go ahead and get our first military 
military tradition. Now, there's different traditions in uh, Imperator Rome, but for us, we're going to go for the Roman traditions because, you guessed it, we're Roman. We've got two options here. We can go for Scale the Walls or Principes, which is going to give Heavy Infantry Offense. I'm going to go, of course, for the Heavy Infantry Offense. I'm also doing this because I want to actually get the Triple ACs, which is a unique military tactic available to the Romans once we've uh, gotten the third level of uh, tradition here. So we just need to get a little bit more experience as consequence. Let's go ahead and also get the uh, Punic Reform. So now that we've passed that, we can do our first cohort. We don't have too much money, so it's not going to be the biggest of cohorts, but we're going to go to our military and in Italia, we can do the first cohort. We can edit the composition of the cohort, which is something I personally really love. It is going to cost quite a little bit. So uh, let's see, we could say do how many cohorts right now? We can do six heavy infantry, which is going to be 3000 manpower, by the way. One donkey for now as well. Maybe some heavy cavalry or some archers as well. This would be too much manpower, 4,500. We don't have that much. We need to wait for the manpower to recover. So I guess we can do our legion after we've uh, replenished our manpower pool a little bit more. I also want to attack the uh, revolt that the Etruscans have so we can uh, take this before the northern nations do. I don't have a truce with them because they revolted after I um, finished my war with the Etruscans. Let's go ahead and raise our armies once more. Not as many as before, but enough 8,000 to take care of uh, 2,000 Etruscan rebels, that's for sure. And it looks like the Etruscans actually deleted most of their ships because they didn't have the economy to sustain it, I guess. Gadir calls for aid against Carthage. We received an urgent envoy from the small state of Gadir requesting our immediate assistance against the Carthaginian scumbag. We have two options. We're not ready for war, so we get some manpower, 5,000 that we actually need, some approval from our peeps, as well as we get claims on Carthage, or we can just ignore them. I'm gonna say we're not ready yet, so we can actually start getting ready for the war with the Carthaginian. And that 5,000 manpower is enough for me to build my first uh, cohort, so my first legion, that is. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm gonna go for 10 heavy infantry, a little bit of supply train, and we need some cavalry as well. I'm gonna go for light cav first. Ooh, we don't have enough for light cav. Okay, let's make it like this. This is fine. This is 8,000, and we can add the cavalry afterwards. The beginning of a new era is definitely here. Legio Italia will be awarded Primogenia because it is the first legion, and you can even see the sprite on the map itself is different from the levy soldiers. So this is what the cohort units look like, or the legionary units look like, and this is what the pre-Marian reform units look like, even though technically we didn't get the Marian reforms yet. Also, a unique feature for Imperator that I absolutely adore is the ability to set unit objective. And this means you can either let the unit act independently so the AI takes over and controls this unit. You can assign it to border defend in good old fashioned way. Go with your some of your legions to defend the border. Carpet siege, reconnaissance, or keep unit in reserve to stay behind and avoid the enemy. It is beautiful that this exists and it's sad that we don't have this system in EU4. Why do we not have this in EU4, man? Wait, what? What the hell happened? I was about to take this and the rebellion just disappeared and this went back to Etruria. Yeah, I mean, the game clearly still has a few things that it needs to work through, but uh, okay, fair enough, buddy. I was curious what the rest of the world looks like, and I have to say I'm a little bit shocked with how massive the Selewich Sid Empire is. I mean, these guys are busting right here. Holy snaps. Bactria still manages to stay alive somehow, and uh, we've got Epirus, which established itself pretty well, which is historical. Let's face it, uh, Pyrrhus of Epirus was one of the biggest uh, rivals we would have. Now, that being said, it's time for our war against Syracuse so we can get our holdings over in the uh, Sicilian parts. I'm also going to be editing my uh, cohort here and I'm going to add two heavy cavalry, not light cavalry. We're not wussies. We're not going with light units here. We're going to put the heavy cavalry on our flanks. So this is going to be one of the strongest armies in the world right now. Way stronger than anything else we're going to be encountering for sure. And we just got the uh, heavy cavalry discipline plus 10% surplus that we wanted to get at the start now to actually make use of it. Attack him Scubabigadum, skibidi bump, skibidi bay. I'm going schnapple dupe you. Wait, what? How the frack? Oh man, this is so dumb. Please tell me I don't have a truce with them. Of course I have a truce with them. Brother, are you kidding? So I found a bug. Scripted event. I attacked Syracuse and then Epirus got involved in the war and somehow Syracuse pieced me out. Pretty sure that's not supposed to happen. Pretty sure you're supposed to stay in the war with both Syracuse and Epirus. Oh my god, when the hell did they recruit that many? Oh, I see. They recruited mercenaries, didn't they? They definitely recruited mercenaries. Or someone else has ships, because they are not supposed to have ships. Alright, you know what? Since uh, we're at war with the Epirates, we might as well attack a Mesapia, which is also an ally of the Epirates. So let's go two wars for the price of one, essentially. We cannot have uh, Syracuse. At least we can get the other part of the shoe of Italy, right? Oh, look who the cat just brought in. If it's not Pyrrhus of Epirus himself, it's not. Let's go ahead and 
build some of these ships. We need at least 10 triremes, I guess. Maybe a few Liburnians. And we got no more money, so actually I'm going to cancel a few of these. Need to fix our economy as well. Oh, okay, buddy. How the hell were their units so good? We were victorious, but they were fighting against my legion, and they still managed to inflict quite a little bit of damage. Like, what the hell? Do Epirates actually get some special buff or something in this mod? I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and delete some of these forts. We have way too many forts in our country. It's actually affecting our economy a lot because we got way too many forts now. Oh my god, they're melting. They're actually melting. Oh, I love legions. I love them so much. We waited for long enough that we can attack these guys again. So time for Syracuse War Part 2, boys. And I'm gonna get me some of these uh, naval mercenarios, which we can use to uh, fight against the Epirate mercenarios, naval mercenarios too. I'm also gonna use my excess uh, political influence to get religious endowments in uh, some of my provinces. What this does, once this is complete in one year, it's gonna allow me to get one more local city building slots in every one of the provinces so we can build more stuff in these lands. Of course, we can also go for the other options here, such as, for example, provincial loyalty and fort infrastructure capacity, population capacity, import routes, and I just realized it's actually six months, it's not one year to finish that. Oh, we just got another trade for our legion. So we have Montijena, which offers us loyalty gain chance increase. Okay, that's not good. But we do get mountain combat bonus and hill combat bonus, which is great, actually. I really like the system where for the legions, you get specific traits that uh, will stick with that particular region for the entire campaign. I feel like that's such an amazing thing to have for your armies because it makes your individual armies more valuable. And obviously, you care about uh, making sure this legion does not perish at any point in your campaign, right? Hopefully that makes it to EU5. I would love to see that as a feature. We've been at war once more for quite some time, which is why we have 12 war exhaustion and it's uh, ramping up massively because we have coal to peace right now. So we do have to make our peace. Unfortunately, the Syracuse war, we have 100 days roughly to get more lands before we are forced to peace out with just the Lucanian area, which essentially means just Elia. So we have to peace them out now. That means that in essence, uh, they're going to be able to keep control over over most of the Sicilian parts. We're only taking the historical actual provinces that the Romans had in Sicily, minus the one province here, which has the fort of uh, Meligunis. But it's fine. 13 aggressive expansion, and that's gonna be it. Now Sicily is divided in three parts, as it was historical. Syracuse, Carthage, and the Roman parts. Also, Epirus collapsed, so we don't have Epirus anymore. We have Aetolia. I'm not sure if this was an event or what exactly happened, but they disappeared, and the northern part somehow became Epirus, which basically made me get a white piece with them. Looks like we have a decision now. We can do sulfurous investment, which means that the province of Tindaris is going to get permanent 10% the population capacity output and slaves leader for so surplus reduction. Also, we can do another mission here, namely take the Brutians, and that means we get even more Roman Populationicum. There you go. In order to drive uh, the goals out, we have to attack the Venetians. Right now, Veneto because of the game settings that we set up earlier, everybody's blobbing. Like, everybody is actually blobbing. But Veneto has most of the North Italian parts. So, so after I'm uh, done with a couple of city-states left in the south, I'm gonna have to attack Veneto, and I'm gonna have to um, impose Roman rule on that area, because it is, after all, rightful Roman clay. We already have a few uh, claims on the Veneto areas, but we want to get claims on the rest of the areas, so it's less aggressive expansion after we've uh, basically taken the Italian parts that we want from them. The great part though is that Veneto is actually a Venetic culture so they're propagating pops that are within the same culture group as us in areas which are predominantly Lepontic as it stands right now. Holy snaps, Marshall advances level 4 which means we're gonna be slapping around everybody around us now. No more Mr. Nice Guy, we're gonna be raffle stomping everyone and Naeus is a little bit more displeased. Well, who gives a snaps about Naeus? I guess we can say that Naeus can and, uh, nay on my balls. There, I said it. I freaking said it, okay? Go ahead and get the uh, surplus for stone because we want to get the extra build cost reduction minus 5%. Now, guys, take note. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but uh, you only get the surpluses for the imports into your capital. So for the trade routes in your capital. The trade routes outside of the capital don't matter. You don't get the bonus for your whole country from these trade routes. Keep that in mind. And since we are on the topic of imports, you should always first and foremost import grain in your provinces if you don't have it already uh, outside of the capital provinces because that's going to give you six monthly local food. Most of the other goods give three or two such as dates only gives
gives only two, but the grain gives six, which is a huge deal in my opinion. That's why also having a little bit of an extra grain surplus in your capital is a big deal. We have plus two. We don't need plus two. Actually, for that matter, we don't need plus two of iron either. Also, I should probably have mentioned from the start that the Marshall tree, you can start going to the right side and all of them, not just the Marshall one, will have multiple stuff, not just the ones that you start off with. So keep an eye out for that. A lot of the texts that are really good can be down the path of your right hand side uh, branch, not to the left side branch also. Only exception from this is the uh, religious advances, which is only one main branch. Disband all the levies, don't need them. Let's just keep our regular cohorts. Bring them in the north because the big war is going to be against the Venetians in a few moments. How much uh, troops they got? They got military tech zero. Beautiful. That means we're going to be stomping them without even having to raise levies, actually. Let's see what our country is looking like now. Oh, look at that. We have 408 Roman citizens, more than the Etruscans. Finally, we managed to get more Romans than Etruscans. 1,000 pops in Italia, 770 in Magna Grecia, and 45 in Cisalpine Gold because we don't really have much of Cisalpine Gold, sadly. And holy shit, 15 freaking war exhaustion. Yeah, we're going to need to chill him for quite a bit. Let's check what the world around us is looking like now. So Pictonia managed to semi-unify the uh, Golian parts. We also have the Brigantins in uh, the English lands, Arevaccia, Carmoia, Boletia fighting over in Hispania. Massacilia is uh, actually doing pretty good. They've kind of wiped out most of the other rivals they had in uh, North Africa. Carthage is still consolidating its hold. Seleucid Empire is massive, but they have some revolts now. Mauria managed to destroy Bactria, which is now basically living on life support, I would say. Nothing unusual in the Arabian lands. Ptolemaic Kingdom did not really expand much. Well, wait, did they actually wipe out the Judea or they're in the process of doing so now, I guess? Trace is big. Tilataya is big. Yeah, looks pretty standard. Nothing I need to be worried about, honestly. I think the only thing I, I need to be careful with is the Carthaginians, which have pretty high tech military and they've got a pretty sizable population pool. Also going to build the very first academy in uh, Rome. And whilst we're at it, I'm going to build some more farming settlements around my area. So let's get some in the south. We don't really have too much going on in the south for us. We can get two of these done in the south, actually. Now, I'm also going to change the policy in uh, the province of Lucania, which is a little bit disloyal. We're going to go with harsh treatment. This is going to essentially uh, increase the loyalty of the province, but it's going to lower the population output because of, you know, us harshly treating people there. Remember that the policy is really important, especially if you want to assimilate peeps a little bit faster, which is something we're going to do in the northern parts of our country. Getting the cultural assimilation helps massively. You want more manpower, you get the borderlands. You want more trade, you get the province uh, commerce and so on. Social mobility is huge as well. All of these are really great. It, it really just is a matter of what exactly you need from your particular province, really. Wait, what? Etruria just got destroyed by Gymnasia. Is that where all gymnastic players come from? From Gymnasia? That, that, that actually makes a little bit of sense, doesn't it? In any case, we're going to be attacking Croton because we have uh, less um, war exhaustion now. And we're going to be attacking Gymnasia right after because they have a truce with the Carthaginians. They have no allies. It's basically a free kill. And the moment that their truce is done with the Carthaginians, I highly suspect that the Carthaginians will also want to take Corsica. Looks like I'm a little bit late to that. Holy shit, they're getting attacked. Yeah, let's see what the outcome of that's going to be. Whatever the case, we're still going to be attacking Corsica right after they're done. We also got to take Lucania. So we have essentially all of the southern bits. We don't need to worry about any one province minor areas. Oh, and we have enough uh, military tradition. Let's go. That means we now have the triple ACs. Let's go, baby. That is juicy. That is actually juicy. There you go. Triple ACs. It means we have extra bonus for our heavy infantry. And remember that our heavy interest infantry is the majority of our army and for the mules for some reason. So sure. Plus they do extra damage versus phalanx and skirmishing less against deception and hit and run tactics, but not many people that we're be fighting will have deception or hit, hit and run tactics to be fair. Although we probably should stick with bottlenecking because we have a lot of heavy cav and a lot of archers now. Okay, we'll use triple ACs once we have more heavy infantry than uh, what we have right now. And yes, you saw that right. We're building up our fleet. We want to have enough ships to stand against the Carthaginians. Level five for martial advances. Ho my gore. Ho my actual gore. Should we try and push towards cohorts? I feel like that's definitely smart because uh, we need to get cohorts in order to uh, do the uh, Marian reforms. Holy mother. Venice just doubled in size, man. They have a thousand pops. There's a thousand. Oh my God. They literally are the same size as us. That is scary. That is actually scary. You know what that means though, right? It means that we probably should attack them. After this claim, I'm attacking the Venetians. Also time to make our uh, first legion a little bit bigger. At least 10,000 should be fine. Manipular legions me means we get 2.5x 
extra discipline. So we're very close to getting our cohorts now. You know, we're advancing technology so quick. It, it means that it was worth building all those early libraries all around the country. And speaking of, we probably should build some more libraries around our country now. Say in Neapolis, why not? Wait, actually it's not great because Neapolis doesn't have a dominant culture and integrated culture. What is the dominant culture here? So we've got the Italiotian. Oh shit. Okay, we don't have enough Romans in uh, Neapolis. That is surprising. We have a bit of an issue in South uh, Italy. We're losing loyalty of the provinces because of the corruption of the governor. So it's time that we replace this guy. Let's uh, change him up with uh, Gaius Clodius Cowodex, which does not have any corruption. So that means the provinces are going to be gaining some loyalty a little bit faster. Oh, we got barbarians? <laughs> What? So apparently we're getting our asses handed to us by barbarians. Just as I was about to attack, these comebacks decided they want to get their asses handed to them. Get out of my face, barbarians. Don't you even dare come over here. Sadly, the Corsicans got wiped out, but not to fear. They got wiped out by the South Corsicans, I guess you could call them. And all three of them are allied to each other. So that's basically one war in which I can take out all three. Let's go ahead and embark our troops here so we can march on over to the other lands. It is in fact true that we can right now build the roads with our legions should we want to within our provinces only 50 ducats per province and then we can build roads around the entirety of the italian peninsula making it so much faster for us to move units between the north and the south that's going to be the goal after we've uh, taken corsica of course i'm actually curious if you guys want me to stream this game i was honestly thinking of doing a stream for imperator on youtube let me know in the comment section what you think about that I i'd love to do one and just show you guys how awesome this game is i'm i'm, I'm actually having more fun on right now playing this game that I've had playing any other game in the past month because it's just so in-depth and there's so many layers to Imperator especially if you're playing as the Romans like for example right whenever you assign your offices obviously the most important thing is the the value they have for zeal or for martial and so on so that you get the most benefits out of them and the most bonuses from that particular office but at the same time you also want to look at the age and the family that that person is a part of because someone that's 22 is going to live for longer and is going to be able you're going to be able to take advantage of this dude's abilities for a much longer period whereas if you put someone who's 70 years old he's likely going to be better than the 20 year old but he's going to die soon and then you're going to have to put someone in that office again resetting the values to zero in the process this right here is a great freaking uh, discovery so we got monthly wages for characters minus 10 percent which is huge because it means we pay people less and people are actually the most disgusting uh, thing we have to pay for because there's a lot of people and then we also get the cohort loyalty chance reduction which is really great for the mid part of this game and speaking of imports we can have up to 17 imports right now in our capital which is massive really go ahead and get the bonus for the precious metals thank you very much and who's uh we got corsica uh, which means uh, when we're ready to attack the Carthaginians, we can attack them both in Corsica and in Sicily at the same time and swipe both of these from them in the process. And what do you know? We got 18 capital imports now. Hot dang. What the hell is this? Tartessian Republic. Uh, what? Are they Carthaginians or something? No, they're Iberic. Oh, did they revolt against the Carthaginians? Oh, that might actually be it, boys. Holy snap. And look at this. Carthage is attacking Massesilia, which is huge because Massesilia is kicking Carthage's ass. Oh, 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 oh. This might be my chance to attack Carthage, actually. Let's do that. And Carthage just lost against the barbarians of Maselicia, which now pretty much have the entirety of North Africa. Holy mother. Do I even want to have a foothold in Carthage, which might get attacked by these guys afterward? And look at that. They even lost a lot of their tributaries, which I guess were annexed by Maselicia. Holy mother, bro. Let me actually get some claims. First on Sardinia. Then I'm going to get some claims on Sicily before I attack. It's time for the greatest war civilization has witnessed up until now. Attackium von Carthaginium. That's totally a word. I didn't just make up, okay? All right, let's go ahead and uh, rush for the uh, cities they have in Sardinia as well. We got to grab these fortifications before they actually start sending units to Sardinia. They recruit any ships? Not sure, but right now they have 34 national ships. Hopefully they don't get any mercenaries and screw us up with mercenaries though. Because you know, historically, the Carthaginians were known for having recruited a bunch load of mercs in fact most of their armies were predominantly mercenaries more than anything else so historically what happened is the romans got their assets handed to them by the carthaginian superior ships and what happened afterwards was the romans adapted and they basically copied the carthaginian ship designs and built a fuck ton of them to the point where they just abandoned their old shipwright uh, traditions and they uh they went full on carthaginian and beat the carthaginians with their own ships essentially we have to be careful the carthaginians have a tendency 
tendency of uh, attacking us in our cities and we don't want them to siege down uh, Rome especially because that would be actual freaking disaster. Luckily though we managed to wipe out the expeditionary force here. Let's go ahead and wipe out their little vassals expeditionary force too. Unlike the Carthaginians we pretty much have infinite amounts of manpower compared to them so we're not worried about losing a few units here and there. They on the other hand cannot replenish as fast as we can though. The trick to beating the Carthaginians is also to use the ships to transport units between provinces so instead of sending my troops manually along the way to the south of uh, Italy which would take a lot I'm just uh, ferrying them over with my ships which means that I'll be able to relieve the siege of Syracuse significantly faster and even prevent them from taking this and then push on over into the rest of uh, the Sicilian parts. Oh we just got another trade for our legion let's see what is that that is Compester which means we got planes combat bonus formland combat bonus and loyalty increase that's fine I don't mind the loyalty increase considering we made these guys actual freaking chad lords right now carthaginian syracuse to rome no i don't want just syracuse i want syracuse and sardinia and whatever else you have in sicily scumbag you think i'm gonna let you get away with just one province come on okay well they are agreeing to my terms they're giving me sardinia and sicily so let's go with that because i might have a civil war and we gotta get ready for that particular prospect right need to make sure we don't go into civil war and i need to be at peace for that particular thing to happen uh syracuse and technology 120 months don't mind if i do i don't care that we basically turn this city to rubble it's fine don't worry about it it's now a settlement holy shit we actually did turn it into rubble wow turn it back into a city it's gonna cost us not that much actually so let's do it oh we forgot to siege and take these two provinces back oh that's a little bit unfortunate isn't it cool part is that now we can become either an oligarchy or a plutocratic republic if we want to be one now if we do become a plutocratic republic that means that we get one extra capital trade route which is huge and income uh, from trade which is massive again we don't have a co-consul anymore so that's something different and we have two civic ideas and one religious instead of two military and one oratory so we would have to change this civic religious you know what i kind of feel like i want to become a plutocratic republic fuck it let's do it let's do it boys all right let's get our new civic ideas now capital import routes plus three yes please national income plus 15 citizen output population oh my god these are all freaking insane holy shit these are actually insane I'm gonna go for the build time and cost because that's gonna be massive in the long run and then month three civilization level war exhaustion reduction pop conversion speed plus 20 percent yeah i'm gonna go for the conversion speed thank you very much so how many trade routes can we get now in rome we got 22 trade routes what now with all of the italian peninsula and islands under our control and with the carthaginians beaten to a bone up next i want to do the roman empire borders until the next time check out this awesome victoria 3 video and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support